Chapter 192 Round the Way Soon as I was released from the halfway house, I went around my neighborhood to check the temperature. Word in the penitentiary and in the halfway house was, First and Kennedy was loaded with rats. It was only rats around First and Kennedy. All the real men were gone. Probably for good. Only rats were left. The words hit me hard. A legacy of that kind could never stand while I was breathing. It was a slap in the face to all my comrades that lost their lives in and around Kennedy Street. All of my comrades that were rat hunters and rat killers. Benny Lee Lawson. Chris Boren. Mark Bundy. And many more. It was something that had to be repaired immediately. I drove my car through the block and it was true. It was infested with rats. I was looking for Earl E. Johnson, the notorious rat that implicated everyone on the Kennedy Street conspiracy. He had been home for a few years and I had heard he had gotten comfortable enough to return to the crime scene. But I saw a white boy Don, Craig Low Ugly Brandon, Fat Terry, Aaron Cook Lowry, Michael Blind Hardy, all go hard suckers, all punks, all rats. The rumor was real. Rats had totally infested First and Kennedy and Benny Lee's legacy was being tarnished. My legacy was being slaughtered. My brother's legacy was being disintegrated. And all the dead and locked up homies' legacies were being butchered. When First and Kennedy was picked up on RICO charges, the rats did short time or no time at all, so they had been free to roam for a few years, scot-free. The younger homies who came up under them had the slightest idea that they were rodents. They had them thinking that they had served their time on the conspiracy and was back. They had them thinking they were official. They had them thinking that they were certified soldiers. Until I returned. They had the young girls in a frenzy. They had them thinking that they were the shit. The youngins was on the porch getting protected by their parents when we were on the streets, but now they were off the porch doing their own thing. The girls had grew up and they were fine. And they were intrigued by the suckers. The suckers were telling official stories, except they all left out a major detail. They all left out that they were all rats. They all left out that they were too soft to do time. They all left out that they were scared to go to prison. They all left out of DC jail as suckers. They all left out that I was waiting for them to come down to Lawton. Waiting for them to repent their sins. But I wasn't waiting anymore. I was back. I returned. I'm here. The facade is up. The faking is over. I parked across the street and got out of the car. I stood still. They all looked over at me and their whole demeanors changed. At first they were laughing and joking while smoking. But now they weren't even smiling. Now they weren't chucking and jiving and high-fiving. No more lying. A bunch of young soldiers were surrounding them talking and when they saw me they were intrigued to come over to meet me. They were kids when I went to prison but heard only great things about my character. One of them spoke to Craig Low Ugly Brandon. Hey Ugg, ain't that twin across the street? Oh shit, twin home! The young comrade was smiling from ear to ear but Ugg wasn't. He turned his back. Cook turned to blind and Fat Terry walked in the opposite direction. Come on, the young comrade said to Ugg. He nudged him to walk with him, but he refused. He just stood there looking across the street as if he saw ghosts. I could read his mind. Damn, I knew this day would come. Fuck. The facade is over. Earl E. Johnson wasn't out there. 
The homie Ben had caught him in a corner store and spat in his face close range. The rat pulled a pistol and they exchanged shots. I had the 9mm browning in my dip with two extra clips on my hip, but I knew these chumps. I knew these yammers. And they knew me, so I didn't trip. I had a chopper in the car too with the extended banana on that bitch. They knew that I knew who they really were. They knew that I knew the FBI were slapping them around in interrogation. They knew that I knew they were begging the FBI not to send them to the penitentiary. They knew I was down there demonstrating and they knew once they got down there they had to see me. They knew that I knew everything. They knew at this moment they could be killed for the very thing they once despised. They were hoes. But overall they knew one thing, that they were definitely going to get exposed. The young soldier came across the street to meet me with three other youngsters while Lil Ugly and the others walked away. The rats were disappointing to everyone, but more than anything else, they were disappointing to themselves. How can you rat on your partners? The partners that would kill and die for you. How can you let some college educated weirdos with FBI badges scare you into being the very thing we all despised? It's impossible for someone like that to live comfortable within themselves. And with me being free, showed them that snitching wasn't necessary. They could have easily played the fifth and kept their respect for themselves and others intact. But now, you're not even allowed to fraternize with the very men that you idolized. You're not even allowed in their presence. You're not even allowed back on your block, your home, the 100, First and Kennedy. You're not allowed, bitches. They all heard about me pushing a knife down Lawton and punishing informants. They knew of my track record which spanned over a decade. They all understood what my presence meant, and instead of trying something bold, they folded like they would always do when presented with pressure. They all walked away, never to return, as I expected. Chapter 193 the five stages of death. Now I had to break the bad news to the young comrades. The men that they've been idolizing was not worth speaking to. The men that they've been shown the utmost respect to for the past few years weren't anything that they portrayed themselves as. Even though they were killing machines, they were really bona fide cowards. They were stooges for the FBI. Suckers and dick eaters. The youngsters didn't believe me. I told them to look around. Where did they all go? They looked around and noticed that everyone I named was gone. Bet that you will never see them around here again. They looked lost trying to figure out what had just occurred and then they all went through the five stages of death with my presence. Denial. No way, homie. Impossible. They did their time and came home. I saw their paperwork. They clean. Tuh. Anger. Fuck no. Hell no. Them dudes is who I came up under. They taught me everything that I know. I done killed for them dudes. And they did the same for me. Tuh. Bargaining. You think they might have just gotten tricked to make some statements because they were naive and young? <laughs> Depression. I can't believe this. I'm sick about this. <laughs> Acceptance. Damn. That's crazy. <laughs> you can't be no official banger if you're scared to go to prison. Prison is a part of the game. If you're doing illegal activity, prison is a great possibility. If you don't want to go to prison, then don't break the law. But if you break the law, then don't be scared of prison. That's Lee's law. 